Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, we're going to look at Bitcoin, obviously, but we're going to have a look at some of the um, sort of the foundation of this channel, really, which is Matic and Harmony One, um, because they look as though they're going to do something good, but everything hangs in the balance with Bitcoin about to do its halving. Uh, does that mean it's going to halve in price, or does that mean it's going to FOMO? Uh, who knows what's going to happen? I do have a theory, but the chart doesn't really help with that. We can uh, we'll have a look at that first of all, then. So. Well, all I'm going to say about Bitcoin really is that obviously the halving event looks very much as though it's been priced in. When you price in the halving event after a crash like we had here, um, we price in the halving event for every single coin that we see. Uh, pretty much every single coin has has done something very similar to that. So we're looking at the, um, the USDT charts, the tether pairings really, to see how they all pretty much represent the same thing. So, uh, crash, recovery, uh, let's look at how many one, we have crash, recovery, we have Bitcoin crash, recovery, okay? So, generally speaking, alts amplify the moves of Bitcoin, and that seems to be what's been happening across the board. Uh, and now, as we've got closer and closer to the halving, what we've noticed is that most coins um, have started to tail off a little, and Bitcoin is the one that's racing back to where it was before the whole crash began. So many of these coins, such as Ethereum, for instance, were doing extremely well uh, prior crash, and then after the crash, it did very well, and then it tailed off a little, and Bitcoin took the took took full power, uh, full steam ahead. And the reason for that. Um, would be because there is a halving event, uh, and so everybody is buying back their their coins or they're buying into their coins. And it doesn't take much for the many of these coins to recover because even though their market caps might sound huge um, to us who have very little in our banks, um, but generally when you're looking at the financial markets, it's a drop in the ocean. There's not really much. So it doesn't take a great deal of money for some of these coins to begin to pump because there's not much money. Uh, involved in them anyway, so um, re relatively small investment sizes can make these coins pump quite significantly. Anyway, with Bitcoin um, getting close to essentially where it topped off at this level here, 10,500, or you could call it 10,625, um, and the halving event uh, creeping around the corner in just a few days, I am expecting a, a pump and then a dump. That's basically what I'm expecting. And the reason for that is because, yes, we can see this RSI is already getting over an 80% read here, but that's not a big deal, really. When you think about RSI and FOMO together, they don't make sense. RSI and FOMO aren't the same thing. You can use the RSI, definitely, to say, right, I think there's a chance that we might be topping out at the moment, but as we're all expecting FOMO, the RSI can't account for that. We know as humans that there will be FOMO involved with Bitcoin, or there will be an attempt to FOMO, and maybe everyone's going to get burned because there'll be mass manipulation taking that FOMO uh, and then just basically just crashing it and sucking up every last penny that's been FOMO'd into that and that's what I think is going to happen because the RSI will tell you that there is a level uh, generally speaking where it cannot take any more and then what needs to happen is either a sideways trend or a, or, or, or a giant crash and I mean a giant crash or there would, there would be um, a long term downtrend. So we're looking at it on the, on the daily here so what do we see? We have reached areas of way over 80 in the past. If we see back here at our parabolic top, we actually reached a was that a 94% on the RSI and then what happened after that? Unfortunately, it didn't work out very well. Uh, we we I think that that is close to an 80% retracement. Let's just measure that out. Uh, oh, it's a 83, 84% retracement. So, it's actually not not very good for any asset. Um uh, when um, when the RSI gets that high, and that was FOMO back in 2018. That's what FOMO looks like. This was close to be uh, this. Uh, this essentially was FOMO, and this is what FOMO looks like. This is FOMO, and we will then see what FOMO looks like again. If you couldn't remember what it looks like here, and you couldn't remember what it looks like here, so. The unfortunate thing about this is that if this FOMO does not reach this level here, it means that the downtrend will be 
likely to test down to these levels again back here I would say 6600 um, and it could break but I don't think it would if the FOMO breaks uh, which it will and the downtrend begins I think we might see Bitcoin of around about 6600 again because that was a very strong point we might find it's at 7700 again because that was also a strong support on the way down here but that did eventually break that would be our first strong support and this is where we launched from just recently here 7700 is a strong support it's also a strong um, uh, resistance level uh, but these are the levels I'll be interested in when the FOMO finally collapses. I'm not telling anyone to do anything because I'm not a financial advisor, it's not financial advice, but this is what I'm expecting with Bitcoin. RSI is going to reach uh, really high, I might even get over 90 again like it did in 2018, and then it, we will have a crash and then a, and then a prolonged downtrend and we might be able to pick up uh, at levels like 7,700 or 6,600 again. But there's also another thing to bear in mind is that the world is in a bit of a strange situation now. Financial markets with the entire world is, is looking pretty bad. So with that in mind, Bitcoin is tied into those financial institutions. As much as you don't like the idea that it is, it is. The fact that you can leverage uh, Bitcoin and, and basically means that it in many ways has, it has connections to the financial system, the financial system that it wasn't supposed to be connected to. Okay, if that makes sense. So it will, it will move with the rest of the market. It will move with traditional markets. So after this halving event, yes, Bitcoin miners will be earning half the amount that they earn today. Uh, that should instill some form of intrinsic value to it, uh, and it definitely will over time. But immediately after, I don't think so. I think that's already been priced in for what we see here, um, and we will begin that downtrend again. Uh, that's how I see it. Anyway, the chat still looks good. We've got a golden cross thing coming. Um, we've got bullish uh, MACD. RSI is quite high, but you know what I said about the RSI. It's you know it can go a lot higher than that. We could reach areas such as fourteen thousand, no problem. We could even reach twenty thousand, no problem. You see, you see, last time we were uh, at this level here, where we are right now at an eighty read, we were back here at this level here, all the way back down here, seven thousand six hundred. And where did we reach? About a month or so after. 20,000. So RSI, you cannot go by the RSI when we're expecting FOMO. FOMO and RSI do not mix. Okay, you can't trade that. All right, in a situation that we are in right now. Okay. Anyway, it looks bullish, and we are expecting a pump, and no doubt we will receive that pump. And I couldn't give you an idea of where that pump will take us, uh, but we will get that pump. But the but the dump will come. Anyway, I've rambled on a lot about Bitcoin. Let's move on to some of these other coins, Harmony and Matic, because these are the ones that the video is supposed to be about. So we'll look at the SATs levels first of all. So the SATs levels do not look great for some of these coins. We, we, I mean, if you think about it from where it started, um, uh, Matic started at 51 cents, we're at 181 cents. Yep. That's pretty good. <laughs> you know, we're not going to complain about that. We have been a lot higher in the past. We've been very high twice in our, in our life. But recently, what's happened is that yes, that you can see that there has been a gradual uptrend here. But we we've also peaked a little, and we're coming back down. This is to do with the the switch that I was talking about, where people are taking their money out of alts, putting it into Bitcoin because the Bitcoin halving is happening. Okay, so we saw that recently Bitcoin has rallied. Um, really really well dwarfed most altcoins especially the large cap altcoins it's dwarfed them uh, which means that they're ta people are cashing out of their altcoins they're going into bitcoin because there's a halving they're getting ready for the FOMO okay that's what they want that's what people are looking to do so we've seen that we peaked here we were doing very well we peaked and um, our strength has been lost and now we're trending pretty much beneath all major moving averages on the sats level also we're in a giant giant resistance cloud on the daily here which doesn't want to end until uh, around about the beginning of June okay so that's not a good sign at the moment that's not good we've also got a uh, an itchy cloud cross a negative cross here uh, suggesting a bit of a downtrend here um, which would not be surprising at all because Bitcoin's about to rally people are taking money out of alts and we're underneath a giant 
cloud we're beneath all major moving averages so actually it doesn't look good for the long term projection at this moment in time that's a negative cross there weekly chart is not a very useful chart because it's not very old so we don't have a great deal to go by on this one um, but what I can say is that we did have of course we did we did have this negative cross here as a result of that all right, and this is also another reason to be afraid of Matic. Matic can can do amazing things. It can do very tragic things. All right, so most of you who follow me on the Telegram cashed out more or less at the top, and just as well we did. I didn't expect this. I did not expect that, but we got it. I did not expect that. So, yeah, we're still in a long-term projected downtrend, which looks like it wants to get worse. There's no reversing of this trend currently with Sats, unfortunately for Matic. So let's go back to the daily for them because the weekly is not very useful to be honest, especially with a chart that looks like Matic. Let's compare that to the USDT chart. <coughs> looks very nice very constructive and on this chart we're trending above all major moving averages because it's a bullish chart all right just because you're comparing it with bitcoin we were bullish compared to bitcoin until just recently uh, because people were taking their money out of alt put into bitcoin because of the halving take this into consideration because of the halving this has happened right people are taking their matic money out either keeping it in tether or putting it into bitcoin which is why bitcoin looks like this and matic looks like this um, USDT still tells us that actually, you know, we are looking at a, re a reasonably bullish chart. You know, we've got above all major moving averages. We are getting rejections every time we reach towards the top of the, the Bollinger Band. You know, it's a bit indecisive at the moment, looking a little bit choppy. In fact, I would probably say it's looking a slight bit bearish, um, not bearish, but a bit toppy at the moment. We're above this cloud here, this uh, this level of um, 1, uh, 1.7, or we'll call it 1.8. Um, resistance cloud we're, we're above there we're being held above there at the moment but it wouldn't surprise me if we came down to test some of these lower levels only levels such as you know 1.7 cent maybe even 1.6 cent uh, I doubt this would be my all-time buy for Matic I'd like to see it come down to this level here around about 1.5 um, 1.5 cent would be a great buy for this one because I think we'd find a nice bounce around that level um, but you know RSI is quite high on it. MACD is still looking good, but it's starting to curl a little bit. And, I, and as I said, you know the halving event is going to kick in, and it's going to drain the Sats out of alts. And after the halving event, we will have a dump, which we will probably find a dump with all of these coins. They're, they're amplifiers of Bitcoin's moves, especially these small cap coins. They will dump hard. Okay, but uh, like I said at the beginning, it doesn't take a great deal of money to pump some of these coins because you know they're, they're trading. Um, uh, daily trading is like six million I think on Matic at the moment which is a lot of money but it's not much money at all in the grand scheme of things when you think about something like Forex which trades uh, I think roughly around five trillion a day you know in um, foreign exchange and um, you know six million is absolutely nothing you know what I mean it's, t it's nothing it's, it's absolutely nothing at all so it doesn't take much for these things to pump which means it's good for you and me, we're retail investors, retail traders, armchair traders, whatever you want to call us. It's good for us because we can, you know, we can just about make a living out of it. But you know, it's, it doesn't take much for them to pump, and it takes a lot less for something like Harmony One to pump, which trades almost, um, I probably, I think it's almost ten times less trading volume at the moment than Matic. Which is one of the reasons why Harmony actually looks slightly better in a, in many ways. I mean, when you look at it. It's a, derrible, it's a terrible chart when it comes to the sats uh, on the daily overall, okay? But we zoom in a little closer and just recently we're finding pumps. It might mean that we've bottomed out because we, uh, this, is, this is where we had the giant dump, okay? And we didn't look good as a result of that. When you compare that to Matic when we had the dump, we looked actually quite good on the tether and on the satoshis. So we got satoshi value gaining there and we had one dump here and that declined. Now recently we've found ourselves pumping ever so slightly on the sats so it's looking stronger. Why is that? My guess is that we're at 28 sats at the moment which is might as well be zero you know it's very low it, it's extremely low and with um, sats levels being so low and having small uh, such small amounts of money involved with it um, that it will pump more you can see that each one of these ticks is essentially one now and um, so it wouldn't take much for one of these ticks to, to end up 
you know, giving us a 10% boost on Tether because it's got so low now that small amounts of money can make it pump. If it ever got to the point where it was below 10 sats, every tick down would be a 10%, then 11% or a 12% move in one tick. All right, So you bear that in mind. That's not a good place to be unless you want it to tick to the up. But if it got from here to 10 sats, that's not a good place for it to be. We had our, our, our crash here and we crashed down to this level here where it was just 30 sats and we're now at 28 sats. Looking a little bit sketchy, a little bit scary, to be honest, all right, when you get to that low. Because if we start crashing and going even lower than that, you're, you're going to be losing money hand over fist, especially with your Satoshi parents. It's going to be tragic. It will be tragic for you. So what I'm saying is everything that we look at here has to be taken into consideration. We can look at a chart like this and go, wow, that's a nice uptrend. Just like Matic, just like Bitcoin, that's a nice uptrend. That's a 143. Actually, I think Bitcoin's beaten that. I think Bitcoin did better than that. Um, yeah, it did. So it's not as strong as Bitcoin at all. But um, when we're looking at this chart right now, where do we want to trade it? Do we want to trade it or do we want to take that risk? It's a massive risk. Um, RSI is in a comfortable position. We have got a slight uptrend forming here on the daily, suggesting that we might find a pump. Where could we possibly pump to? I think if we did have a breakout, the breakout wouldn't take us any higher than this um, this itchy cloud here, around 341. Um, that's where I think it would take us to at the very most before a collapse. This chart does not look good in the long term. All right, it's a very short chart. I mean, it dumped pretty much when it came onto the scene. We had FOMO and a collapse, and we've never had a recovery. So, if you were to look at a chart like this, I'd say stay away from it, stay well away from it. But there might be short-term things that we can look at to suggest that there might be some decent moves to be taken from it. At the moment, I think it's too high for uh, where we are right now. I wouldn't want to buy it at, at its current level. It's basically broken the Bollinger Band on the on the four hourly there it's going to want to come back down it's broken the, 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 the Bollinger Band on the daily it's going to want to come back down I'll be looking to pick it up perhaps maybe around 155 sorry 255 I'll be interested in buying it around then but we're about to have that halving all right and when our sats get drained all the time ever since it, it's it's arrival onto the scene the chances are our sats are going to continue to get drained and you don't want to be buying this and holding it for very long if our sats get drained much lower than where we are right now. Buying anything with sats, you know, below 50 is is going to be very very dangerous. You you stand to lose a lot um, in a in a bad holding like that. But like I say, you know, there are certain things about this which look like it's turning a corner ever so slightly. Um, we're having a bullish MACD, um, we're above some of the decent moving averages in the short term, but we're as of today, this moment right now, if we were to break out, um, which I'm not saying we are going to, if we were to break out, we would be rejected just around about 3, 000, sorry, 340. I would not want to hold it much more than that. Probably look at to, to, uh, to, to perhaps maybe get out just before this area, before this last, this last dump, so maybe... Um, yeah, three three forty. You'd want to be selling it probably around three nineteen or something like that. But that's my take on the situation at the moment. Like I say, we're going to have that halving. All eyes are on Bitcoin, and we're going to have a pump, and then we're going to have a dump, and everything's going to dump with it. So, and they will dump hard. So trade carefully, invest very carefully. You know, it's very uh, tempting to go buying into some of these alts now because you think you might have missed the boat with Bitcoin um, but don't get trapped in a, in a trade or with a bunch of coins that you regret because yes you can make a lot but we stand to lose a great deal more um, at the moment so I'll keep my eyes peeled on these All right, short term I think and I mean very short term over the next couple of days maybe we will have a decent pump out of Harmony and maybe we'll get a decent pump out of Matic I think we're going to continue to look at these these coins and these charts after the halving and see when will be a good time if any to pick them up All right. anyway I'll leave it with you there that's quite a long video sorry about that I hope you have a nice evening take it easy and uh, thanks for watching